Hello everybody, hope you're all doing well. This video is a quick introduction to titrations, and this is for all students who are doing chemistry in the Irish Lingser course. All information, all definitions, and illustrations found in this video is from Chemistry Live by Declan Kennedy, the second edition, and that is the textbook that I'm using, and the illustrator is Michael Phillips. These titrations are divided into three sections, A, B, and C. Uh, one is acid base, B is redox, and C is water titrations. Any one of these can be examined in your Irish Leaving Search, and it can be very worthwhile to learn all the steps, and it's an easy 50 marks. So that's 50 marks out of 400 of the entire paper, and that's 12.5% right there in front of you, easily done. So... It is very important that you understand every single step that we do in these titrations because you'll be able to visualize the titration when you're writing the exam itself and you won't be making any mistakes and every single step is logical. So what is a titration? A titration is a lab technique where one volume of the solution we know the concentration of and the other we don't know and we're doing the whole experiment to find the concentration of the unknown solution. So what is concentration? Some of you don't know what concentration is, and concentration of a solution is the amount of solute that is dissolved in a given volume of solution. So if I give you a cup full of salt water, and I'm telling you one tablespoon is equal to 10 grams, and I'm telling you to find the amount of salt in that cup full of water, salt water, so you did the titration and you found out it's 5 grams of salt. I told you before that 1 tablespoon is 10 grams. So you found out 5, that's half of 1 tablespoon, and yours telling me there's half a tablespoon of salt. To put it very, very simply, that's the whole point of titrations. You're finding the amount of solute in a given volume of solution. The only difference from the salt water scenario that I told you is that we don't use spoonfuls or cupfuls. We say grams or milligrams or liters or centimeters cubed. That's it. Now, to find the concentration of solution, we need something called a primary standard. A primary standard is a substance that can be obtained in a stable, pure, soluble solid form so it can be weighed out and dissolved in water to give a solution of accurately known, known concentration. Put it simply, you need to know the concentration of one of the reagents. And when you mix it in water, you form something called a standard solution. Standard solution is a solution whose concentration is accurately known. For this video, I'll be using the example, oh, sorry. I'll be using the example of the very first titration that we have to do, and that is anhydrous sodium carbonate with hydrochloric acid, where anhydrous sodium carbonate is the primary standard and hydrochloric acid we don't know the concentration of. So for a substan substance to be a primary standard, it must follow these criteria. It must be available in a very pure state. It, it must be stable in water, so it shouldn't lose any water, efflorescence, or absorb water, deliquescent or hygroscopic. It's, it must dissolve easily in water. We are not going to be stirring the reagent in water forever. Um, it should have a really high molecular mass. So if you look here, sodium carbonate is Na2CO3. The molecular mass is sodium 23, 2 of sodium 23 times 2, carbon is 12, and oxygen is 16. 3 of oxygen, all that added together, will give you 106. So that's pretty high. And the reason why we're saying we need high molecular mass is that we're humans, there are chances of making errors in the titration, and we're supposed to be extremely accurate in these titrations, so this high molecular mass will compensate for that error that we may make. So, it should have a rapid reaction. We're not going to be waiting for 10,000 years for this reaction to happen. It should be nice and quick that we can do it in one class. Next one, it should not be hydrated. It must be anhydrous. Now, this is extremely important when you're referring to this reagent in any of your exam you need to say anhydrous sodium carbonate an means no and hydrous hydra water no water uh, if you remember how 
sodium carbonate looks like it's a white dry powder and water of crystallization why don't we say crystals is because to make crystals you need to add water to a dry agent so if you want to make salt crystals you just have to add salt salt and water and put it in a baking tray let it dry without disturbing and you have flaky salt so that's how you make the fancy salts but the only problem is you introduce water into that reagent and when you do the titration that's additional water and that would cause some errors so it has to be anhydrous now this would be a very valid question for you to ask why do we do titrations now number one you can see this hydrochloric acid we need this hydrochloric acid to do the second experiment and that will help you to find the concentration of sodium hydroxide and use that sodium hydroxide for the third experiment to find the concentration of ethanoic acid in vinegar. So see how they're connected? You need one answer to find the answer for the next one. And that's why you do titrations. And also, that hydrochloric acid can be used for future titrations and other reactions. So you need to know how concentrated it is for safety reasons and experimental reasons. All right, so this is a very standard procedure of a normal titration. So this is what you do with any reagent, and this should be the procedure that you're following. First of all, I'm using the example of sodium carbonate here. So you have to accurately weigh it with a balance. You find the mass of sodium carbonate. Now, this structure over here is called a clock glass. Some schools use plastic weigh boats, like my school. Doesn't matter. Uh, you put that into a clean beaker, and then you use a plastic wash bottle with deionized water. Something very, very important to say is deionized water. You can't just use the water from the tap and do this because that would introduce error. Deionized water is tap water that has been put through a deionizer and that removes unwanted ions so that's like chlorine fluorine and all those things that we don't want introducing chlorine and fluorine well that comes from water treatment plants and that is required by law um, to add that to keep the water safe for us but if we add that to the experiments that's going to bring very bad results bad errors to the experiment that's going to interfere with the results so this deionized water, you need to say every single time deionized water. I know it's a long word many times I just want to say water, but that will lose marks. So after putting the reagent sodium carbonate into the beaker, you're going to wash it with this wash bottle. So you can th see this tube-like structure that's going to clean every single last speck of that reagent from that clock glass. Because it could be that little tiny amount that you can't even see sometimes on that clock glass that's going to make the difference for the entire experiment so we don't want to take any risks after that you're going to add like about 100 cubic centimeters of deionized water mix it all well together with a stirring rod also known as a glass rod now you keep that aside take a funnel put that on top of a volumetric flask so a volumetric flask is this large round bottomed flask not round bottomed somewhat roundish with a flat bottom and then a narrow neck there is this line and that line is called a graduation mark anything up to there is the volume written on that volumetric flask so this says 250 so any solution up to that exact mark is 250 cubic centimeters be very careful in an exam i know many schools will practice with 250 and that that would be just stuck in the student's head and you may accidentally write that down in an exam, but some questions say 500 cubic centimeters. So be very careful, read it over and over again. So you put the funnel and you put this solution right in, put the stirring rod in as well, um, and then that would go straight in. So transfer the solution, and then you take this wash bottle and wash the sides of the funnel and the stirring rod. Why do we do that? Because again, we don't want to take any risks it's the slightest amount that could be stuck there in the sides of the funnel and the steering rod that's going to make a difference. And of course, we add in more deionized water from this wash bottle to the beaker and add the rinsings down the funnel and rinse over again. 
Now, what do you do next? Many people would say add in more deionized water. Yes, you add in more deionized water. Till about one centimeter cube below the graduation mark. Now, the next step is not to add in more water, is to take off the funnel. Because even the smallest drop that could be falling off the funnel could mean that you have to start over the entire experiment, entire procedure. Because even just two drops above this line means you have to do the entire thing again. You have gone over the limit and you can't take out anything from this uh, flask because you're losing moles of, of uh, solute and reagents. Now you take a dropper and then put water, deionized water, dropwise, till the bottom of the meniscus reaches the graduation mark. So the meniscus, for those of you who don't know, where is it? Is this curvature kind of line that the water forms. It does not form a straight line like that. It forms a curve, curve like this. So that's the same for all instruments and apparatus that we use. So you can see the beer here. You put it there and you have to say eye level, eye level all the time. Now you can see the pipesh here, 25, eye level, always eye level. So you say until the meniscus reaches the bottom of the graduation uh, line at eye level. Now the only exception to this rule is if you're using highly pigmented liquids, uh, solutions like potassium permanganate, that's KMnO4. In that case, you read the top of the meniscus from the graduation mark because it's so pigmented that you can't see it. Here's an example of a past exam paper, and this is how I would approach it. First of all, I would highlight all the important terms. So you can see a student determine the concentration of hydrochloric acid. So concentration, you need to know the definition of it. Standard solution, again, I said that before. And hydrous sodium carbonate used as a primary standard. So you need to know what's a primary standard. You can see the question here. Explain the term primary standard. So all the numerical data I have put in the pink highlighter. So you can see 1.6 grams of mass um, of the base. Sodium carbonate is a base. And 200 cubic centimeters, 25 three titration figures and this would confuse students quite a bit. It used to confuse me really badly. This is how it goes. So grams stands for mass so we don't have to worry about it. So it's the cubic centimeters that causes the problem. This is how I would go about doing this. So the buresh is the number with the weird number. Now I will explain what this means. And then conical flask also known as the titration flask. Don't get put off when you see titration flask. It's the same thing conical flask has the good number. I'll explain that. See here, it says 25 cubic centimeter. It doesn't have 0 0.005 or anything with it. So that 25 cubic centimeter goes to the titration flask, that solution. And, and the rather weird number goes to the buresh. Now the weird number comes from the average titer. So that's the amount of solution that was required from the buresh to complete the entire reaction. Uh, so, how do you do this? Uh, there is a bit of a trick, sorry, there's a bit of a trick in this question. It, it is showing three titration figures, so you repeat the experiment, yeah? But these three ones, you always ignore the first one because those ones are rough titrations. So, forget about that one. And then we take that one, those two, add them together, divide by two, and then you get the mean titer figure. Now, that weird number belongs to the solution in the BRS. Now, this is very important for future calculations, and that's why I'm referring to this. And the very large number, like 200 over here, stands for the volumetric flask itself. So that's how you distinguish all the numbers and grams and masses and everything. All the numerical data, that's how you sort out for your calculations that comes on further, which I'll be doing a video on later. So I hope, hope this video helped. Uh, if you do not remember any of these titrations or you simply have just have not done it, which is highly unlikely, watch YouTube videos. There are really good YouTube videos on these. It is very important that you can visualize these things so you don't make mistakes. And it's very logical when you know the reason behind it. So hope this helps. God bless and very best of luck for your exams.